Hello there once again, time for another obscure game review and this time we're going on the Super Famicom another Japanese only release this one's called Astro Gogo -Go. and it's on the screen behind me already keep an eye on that if you're adverse to bright colours then you might want to put your sunglasses on for this review so let's take a look at my stats for this one so the full title of the game is Uchu Race Astro Gogo, -Go, released for the Super Famicom in 1995, as mentioned another Japanese only release, published by Meldak and developed by Kaze Company, or K's Company, not sure how you pronounce that. Pretty cheap game this one, I paid 6 89 for a box copy of it several years ago, and you can still get it for between 10 and £15, fully boxed and complete. The one I've got is in particularly nice condition, which we will take a look at in a moment. As you can see behind me, very colourful as I mentioned, so that you've been warned, prepare for a bit of a psychedelic overload on this one. There's a close look at the cartridge, so let's now take a closer look at the box itself. So you can see it says Astro Gogo -Go on it and there's lots of characters on the front there, cute characters. Uh, these are the pilots of the ships, various cartoony style characters and these are the ships themselves which as you can see are not really ships, they're kind of shaped like animals or weird creatures of some description there's one that's like a shark, one that's like a bee or a wasp one that's got a skull on, one that's like a bat maybe, I'm not sure, and a scorpion uh, and on the spine of the box we've got the Super Famicom logo on one side Astro Gogo -Go on the other, Astro Gogo -Go on that end and on the back unsurprisingly some screenshots which you can see are very colourful as already mentioned several times so let's have a look in the manual which is very detailed and also has got a lot of English text in which is nice although the, the important text to telling you how to play etc is still in Japanese so each page has got again lots of colour on it um, there's the usual kind of thing controls various screenshots within the book just quickly flick through it how to play it's got an Astro GP thing about retiring which doesn't seem like a very nice thing to tell you about in the instructions time trial uh, again more artwork in the booklet as well lots of screenshots again goes through all the different courses that you can drive on so you've got Sweet Cat Lake Jurassic Star Pinball Colony, these might be planets actually rather than courses, I'm not sure. Firestone Air Station, Satellite, Ice Baby Planet, I think there's different planets and then there's multiple courses on each one. And then it's got some details of the characters within the game, so pilots and machines, you've got Jet, Love, Barry Brune. and Fly High and Eo. so various kind of generic cute characters to be perfectly honest nothing very exciting about them uh, and a bit more Japanese text on the back and some more pictures on the back here's the title screen then and as you can see it's as expected somewhat colourful and uh, after a few seconds it goes into a demo sort of mode which introduces you to the characters in the game and their vehicles that they travel in so just quickly let it go through that sort of attract mode there's only five characters to choose from and five vehicles so it's uh, not a great selection compared to games such as Mario Kart which I will be mentioning at numerous points throughout this review I suspect and then it gives you a preview of some of the tracks doesn't tell you which ones they are though so it's pure guesswork if you like the look of a track whether you actually get to pick it or not so let's get on with the game and what I'm going to do first is show you how the controls work by looking at the time trial because there's less pressure to actually win a race on that so on the time trial mode you can pick from the five different characters doesn't really matter which one I pick for this demonstration and then you can pick from any of the tracks and there's 15 tracks in total uh, split into five 
three lots of five, the Ultra Cup, the Wonder Cup and the Miracle Cup. Is this looking familiar like it might be based on a certain Mario Kart game? And uh, so what I'm going to do is quickly show the Pinball Colony 2 track. And there's a reason I've chosen that one. So the game on the face of it looks a little bit like Mario Kart but with a lot more colour. Maybe Mario Kart on LSD. And uh, you control your cart in the usual sort of way by pressing uh, the B button to accelerate. You go around the course but the way it differs from Mario Kart it's obviously got the same sort of layout of tracks and so forth. You know kind of from behind view. But on this game um, it uses more like the Micro Machine style of controlling the vehicle where you can basically rotate all the way around and it still views from the same angle rather than, than Mario Kart which when you cut, turn left the, the view remains behind the vehicle rather than uh, seeing the side of the vehicle if you get what I mean. And where this particularly comes into an interesting effect is further around this track if we can get around it, which I'm not doing very well. When you get around this section of the track here, I think, if I remember correctly. No, maybe not. I don't remember correctly. Somewhere around this track, I'm sure. Hmm, I think I've picked the wrong track to demonstrate this with. Well, basically, what I was trying to demonstrate is the fact that in certain parts of the track, it actually kind of doubles back on itself. It's definitely not this track. Oh, it is this track. Here we go. This is a bit I was looking at. So basically, the track, you actually drive towards the screen rather than away from it. It only happens sporadically, but you can imagine when you're in the middle of the race, that can get quite confusing. So that's enough of a demo. You've seen a little bit of one of the tracks, give you an idea of the uh, assault on the senses that you're going to receive when I play through the main mode. So let's retire from that end game and we'll show you the main sort of competition mode. So that's the Astro GP and you go normal race or power race. I haven't seen much of a difference between these so I'll just play the normal race. I imagine basically the power race is a bit more difficult, kind of like the 100cc mode on uh, Mario Kart, the, the higher CC mode. Um, so I'll pick a character, I'm going to go with um, the lady character because I've found that she's quite a well, ba well balanced character and I've been able to win races with her most significantly. So then you get to pick which cup you want to play in. There's no uh, locking on any of the tracks, so you can basically play whatever you want from the start. So I go with the easy one, which is the Wonder Cup. And basically you're in a race with five other characters. You have to finish in the top three to qualify for the next race. This is the pinkest track on Earth. And this is the first of the five tracks. And there's lots of jumps on these uh, courses. So you've got to time your jumps correctly and land on the next little island. Uh, there's no gears or anything like that, so it's literally just accelerate around the track. You can use either left and right on the D-pad or the shoulder buttons to steer. Very short track this one as well. And because of the way the tracks are laid out and you never go around a proper corner, I don't think it's actually possible to get back to where you started when you get back to the start line. Um, but you do, so somehow the game is programmed in a way that it actually loops around the track even though it doesn't seem like you could actually get a full circuit around any of these tracks by going around the bends that it shows you. Uh, so your progress around the track it, compared to the other competitors is shown in that little black box on the right hand side where you can kind of see some little blobs for the other characters. I'm currently in third place with a couple of laps to go. Uh, you also get some form of a power up each time you complete a lap. There only seems to be a choice of two. One is going really fast, which I just did and didn't succeed very well with. Um, and the other one is kind of a shield, which you can use to knock uh, the other riders off balance to get ahead of them. So I'm not sure what position I'm in now. Possibly first or second. And I finished first. No, I didn't. I finished second. Sorry. Uh, so that was the end of the first race and I finished second with the fastest lap time of 16 seconds. There's a sort of summary of your progress through the course, including what position we're in at the start of each lap. Then an overall ranking as you'd expect and you get a, a gold, silver or pink um, medal depending on which position you're finishing. 
I finished second, so I got a silver one. And uh, it gives you the records for the tracks and the overall uh, the lap time and also the, the full course time. So I finished third best there. And you move on to the next course, which is in a different location, but it's much more of the same, very colourful. Various obstacles on the track as well. This one's got some little kind of conveyor belt things that kind of put you off balance or speed you up depending on where which ones you land on, which allow you to make good progress on the course. That's the uh, shield power up I've just activated there. So if I if I crash into someone now, it'll basically knock them off course rather than knocking me off course, which is kind of a good thing. If I can catch up with the person who's currently in first place, of course. Here they are, hopefully I can catch up with them in a moment. Maybe not though, there you go, that's going to be the one on. And there are bits where you can go off the edge of the track and fall into the sort of ether, which means that you uh, have to get repositioned on the track. The first uh, five courses, or first four courses at least, are pretty straightforward, kind of introduce you to the game. So while I finish the last couple of laps on this one, the graphics as you've seen are incredibly vibrant, everything's very psychedelic colours, um, not that spectacular otherwise, they're kind of generic sort of arrows and um, wobbly lines and things like that. It's a reasonably good use of the Mode 7 on the SNES but not really that good compared to something like Mario Kart which is a lot more inventive with the tracks. Um, as you can see, as I got onto the last track, the music speeded up, which is a, another thing that's ripped off from Mario Kart. In fact, the noise when you go over the line before the last lap is very familiar as well from Mario Kart. And there we go, I finished first. Hooray. Um, if you don't finish in the top three, then basically you can continue at the expense of another life. Uh, and you get three or four lives, I think. You don't really need them on this first uh, set of courses. So again, goes through the same sort of thing. And uh, I should now be in first place, I think, overall. Yep, yeah, there we go. And uh, I've set a new record on the, that course as well. And it moves on to the third course, which again is more of the same. Not quite as vibrant colours as the previous ones. A bit bland and blue, actually. Music in the background's kind of jolly and forgettable in it ripped off from Mario Kart kind of fashion. This one I think, if I remember rightly, has some points on the track where it'll like zip you forwards, there we go, which is particularly useful to gain advantage on your fellow competitors, uh, but otherwise it's much the same. If you hit the sides, as you can see, you bounce all over the place, as befits something called Pinball World or something like that, I can't remember exactly what it's called. So I'm pretty confident of finishing first place on this course as well. It's a very short track this one, 15 seconds to get around it. There's that music which uh, is very familiar for Mario Kart fans I'm sure. So yeah, it's kind of a mixture of Mario Kart with Micro Machine style handling and control on the car. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. What the hell happened there? Doesn't matter, I won anyway, despite getting knocked all over the place by someone right at the end there. And that's another one complete. You get the idea. It's not too challenging. And the one thing it's really missing is there's no two player option, it's single player only so there's no multiplayer available which is one of the sort of big selling points of a lot of these racing games on the SNES or Super Famicom in this case. So that's another course record. And I move on to the final course which is very orange. It's been tangoed. So orange in fact you can barely see some of the competitors vehicles on it and this one it's got bits where you can fall off the side which I've just done 
hopefully that won't affect me too much. So this one's a little bit more challenging, but not much more. Just in case it's sticking in the middle of the course. There's no sort of boosters on this one. So it's just about getting around the course as accurately as possible without falling off the edge. Oh no, I thought that was the last lap. It's not, I've still got another lap to go. Seems like there's more laps on this one than the previous ones. And I've now knocked that guy off and I'm now in first place. Someone just whizzed past me there, but I'm still in first place. They must have been well behind. And there we go, that's another race finished in first place. You get the idea. So on to the last course. Quickly skip through these as quickly as possible. comfortably in the lead here so as long as I finish in the top three in the last race then I will win this uh, Wonder Cup okay so we move on to the final race and this is where things get a little bit more challenging now as you'll see slightly more sinister music on this one as well we've got jumps over sections of the track here and also these things that bounce you around all over the place Oh, that lava or whatever it is, is horrendously coloured. So you, you've got to try and hit these things to get around the course as quickly as possible. You get the idea. Oh. So yeah, this one's a little bit more difficult than the previous ones. Offers a bit more of a challenge. I'm making a bit of a mess of it as well, in all honesty. Oh. Currently in last place and I've fallen in the lava. It's not going that well. Oh, I'm facing the wrong direction. Got some catching up to do here. In a way, you almost have to just let the thing, let the race run itself on this one. I'm almost trying too hard to get around the track. Oh, I missed it again. Oh, keep forgetting about the last turn each time. <laughs> so last lap and I'm still in fifth place. This is not looking good. Oh, <laughs> they're just losing it completely. And as you can see, I finished last, and so it says cheer up, and then you get to retry or end the game. And I've got five lives, so I'm just going to retry that, and uh, hopefully I'll do a little bit better this time around. So I'm on the final lap of this track, and this time I'm currently in first place, so hopefully things are going to turn out the way I wanted them to the first time around before I messed it up completely by not paying attention again this one's quite a sensory overload and there we go much better that time So I was in first place all the way around except for one lap where I dropped into second. Pretty good going. How's your eyes at this point with all that going on in the background? So as you can see I got uh, four golds and one silver which means I finished comfortably at the top. Hooray. Not quite the best try time I've got on that one. Excuse me. And uh, this is what you get for finishing first. You get this little uh, 
presentation of the cups. Hooray, I won. Congratulations. The first class. Hold it next. Whatever that means. You notice it's all English text in this game, no Japanese text at all, so that's quite nice. Very easily playable for a non-Japanese speaker. So that's basically it, then it just goes back to the title screen. So let's just now do a couple of time trials just to have a look at a couple of the other courses on the more difficult circuits. Uh, I'll use a different character as well. So I'll use um, Cool Jam. Sorry, Fly High in Cool Jam. So we've seen all the Wonder Cup tracks, so we don't need to see those again. And instead I'm going to pick one from the Ultra Cup section. I'm going to go with Air Station because that's a planet that we haven't really seen yet. So the idea of the time trial, as you can probably expect, is just to get as fast a time as possible on the number of laps. But these courses are a bit different in that they've got these fans underneath you, which occasionally... Um, fly you up in the air which can either help or hinder you. Seems to be some things that make you reverse here as well. So in some bits actually it's pretty much all just flying over sections and hoping for the best that you land in the right place. Various obstacles to overcome uh, but it's, it's not really that interesting in all honesty. There's a jump there as well, a fast bit, a floaty bit Another flying up in the air and hoping for the best that you land in the right place bit. And that's a lap completed on that one. This time let's have a look at one of the more challenging ones in the Miracle Cup. So let's have a look at um, Ice Baby Planet 2, why not? This is very blue. So, with the name like Ice Baby Planet, I'm expecting, yeah, here we go, some patches of ice. As you might have expected. So if you try and turn when you're on the ice, then basically you skid all over the place. But the idea is basically to try and avoid the ice, or at least not do any turns when you're on it. Oh, there you go, skidding around a bit. Um, that's the only real obstacle on the ice baby planet ones it would appear. Oh that's not very nice is it? That slows you down a bit. Ah okay so you want to do a jump on those. That seems to have come off the course. That's a very big jump that's very difficult to achieve. What's going on here now? I'm kind of stuck in the landscape. I'm sure that's not supposed to happen. I'm in trouble here. I believe I may have encountered a bug. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm actually stuck outside of the racing track now. Let's see if we can get back on it somehow. Interesting. Doesn't seem to be anywhere to get back on it. Oh, maybe do this. What if I do this? Okay, that's got me back on the course. I don't think that was supposed to happen. Uh, but the objective has been completed in that I've got back on the track. That was interesting, not quite what I was expecting. Uh, so you get the idea, so let's just quickly have a look at a different pilot just to finish things off, I've pretty much covered everything then. So look at this guy, this guy's got no acceleration or handling at all but lots of speed and weight. He's like the baddie of the, of the lot I suppose because he's got like a skeleton's face as well. So let's have a look at him on um, Firestone 2. I don't really care. Just do one lap of this then that'll be it. So as you can see it takes him a while to get up to speed. But once he gets going he really motors around the course. This is another one with jumps and bouncy sections on it would appear. Very similar to the the last track on the uh, 
wonder cup or whatever it was called. There also seems to be some buttons on the ground that you can activate on this one possibly. Oh, it's like under the under that there. Not sure what's going on here. I'm going the wrong way around the course. Something funny's happened again here. It's fair to say it might be a bit buggy this. I don't know, you're supposed to go down there, are you? Wow, this is going all over the place. There's not actually much to do in the way of driving on this one, it's just stay on the track and hope you land on the arrows. Some jumps there, little sections that slow you down. Oh, that didn't work, go to plan either, did it? I wonder if it's, it's behaving very strangely, this is at the moment. It's going a bit odd. Anyway, so uh, you get the idea. It's um, it's kind of fun. It's very colourful, as previously mentioned. It rips off Mario Kart a bit. Uh, it's got a little bit of originality with the control mechanism. The characters are a bit bland and uh, mainly forgettable. Um, kind of cute, but nothing much to write home about. Um, the courses are reasonably challenging, mainly just trying to stop yourself from having a seizure while playing them. Uh, but overall, it, it's a fairly run-of-the-mill kart racing game. There's uh, dozens of them on the SNES. Uh, this one doesn't really have much to set it apart from the majority. And um, it's a pretty well easy, cheap one to uh, pick up if you want to try it out. Um, for me, I'm probably going to sell my copy because, as I've mentioned, it, it's no Mario Kart or any of the other kart racers on the SNES. So... Um, nothing much to write home about it's the main thing it's lacking really is a multiplayer mode i think if you had a multiplayer mode it would make it probably worth keeping hold of um but with it only being single player and the courses not being that imaginative um it's not really one to go back to again once i've finished this review which i'm going to do right now <laughs> Dark side. Two, one, zero.